So I think from a technology standpoint, what I'm seeing happen is with technology, I think the audio technology community is not realizing these adjacent technologies that are coming out in compute devices, be it other sensors, cameras, et cetera, things that can actually augment the creation of the audio experience, as well as enable artists to be even more interactive with their fan base. Because if you can be sitting there knowing, uh, heck, even maybe a facial recognition knows that that artist is having a happy day, you could automatically post, you know, so-and-so is happy today, Taylor Swift is excessively happy today, and automatically post. That's su super silly, stupid, right? But you can learn so much more. There's mo so much more ability for more metadata to embed in content that will allow an interactive uh, experience between an artist and a consumer. I just want to pick up from what you're riffing on there is, I mean, Whole War Band was created by Kevin Godley, who is um, part of 10CC, is an artist, but also um, a music video director, directed some of the biggest music videos, Herbie Hancock, Duran Duran. Um, and you were, you know, you were referring to audio, but all, everything around it. and. That's exactly it, when Kevin thought, well, music isn't just about audio, it's always been visual as well, um, from when you use, you know, you could say Elvis Presley or Beyonce, and immediately you get an image of these two artists dancing, gyrating, that's, that's part of the package, it's not just audio. Mm -hmm. So for whole, with Whole World Band, it's music and video, and the video is a very important part, and particularly in this day and age, as we've we're advancing in the internet, it, it really is all about video and with fan engagement as well. People want to see themselves and see others, see other people who enjoy the same music, playing with them, seeing an artist, and a whole band uh, allows that to happen in a way that also protects artist rights for, an, for a rights holder and also has a revenue system around it because, again, you know, the, the $64 million question is, well, how do I survive as an artist? How do I break through? How do I make money? Just going back to video for a second, though, and how important um, creation and visual is. I mean, I'll give you a great example. I'm sure you all read about how Taylor Swift types one word out to her 50 million Twitter followers, with, which is the word obsessed, and she was refer referencing um, a mashup at this, that this artist did. Her name is Louisa Winward, I believe, and she did a mashup, um, a video mashup, of t two of Taylor Swift's songs, um, which I can't reference right now, so don't, don't kill me. But it got in front of Taylor Swift. Taylor Swift um, typed the word obsessed out to 50 million of her Twitter followers, a very small group. Um, and the artist went on to get one million YouTube um, views and she actually went to, her EP went on to be the number one on the Billboard, Billboard Hot Seat Album Seekers chart. Mm -hmm. So video is a hugely yeah. com important component. Mm -hmm. One other example I'll give you is the band Us the duo, do you guys know them? Adorable um, husband and wife couple. By you know everybody else's stand standards, they had great traction on YouTube. I think they had 300,000 subscribers. They had about 18 million um, hits on their videos. But you know the husband, the guy in the band, his name is Michael. He was like, we still couldn't get the presence we needed, even after something like that. So they were like. We need to find another vehicle to reach people and to get traction. So they went over to Vine and they started creating six second Vine videos, but covers. So they did John, Le John Legend's All of Me. Um, and then they went on to do uh, the neighborhood's uh, sweater weather and they covered that. And a, a you know famous guy on Vine, um, he revined it to his 4.9 million Vine followers. Um, and after that, it was like the snowball effect. So um, they got a lot of pickup. BuzzFeed picked them up. Business Insider picked them up. After that, they got a spot. Um, they did a show on Good Morning America. And then they just signed a deal with Republic. How important is knowing marketing at this stage? I mean, I think, you know, I think 
I, I think you disagree with me a little bit, but I think it's super important. I mean, I think it's super important to be creative. I think it's a super exciting time for indie artists, though. I mean, now more than ever, um, you guys have access to, to everything, right? You have access to information. You have access to all these tools and services, um, you know, like you have access to platforms that'll get your music out to places you'd probably, you know, never be able to before, like Spotify. You can engage your fans with crowdfunding. So I think it's super important to know what you're doing so you can get to that level, you know, where people like this fella down here will start noticing you, mm -hmm. right? And you're, you're at that tipping point. They're going to want to start the conversations with you. I'd, I'd like to say that I think marketing is, um, I, I think it's important. And you have to, you can almost game the system to a certain extent, mm -hmm. but it goes back to what I said earlier. You still have to have something to say, mm -hmm. right? So you can put out all the content in the world. If it's crap, it's, cra it's crap. And mm -hmm. there's a lot of crap out there. Mm -hmm. But if you have something to say, uh, I think an audience will pick up on it. The, the traditional gatekeepers have been removed. So if you do have something good to say, if you do create content that people want to see, whether you think, and now good is a value judgment. It's a subjective value judgment, so I just want to make that clear. What I think is good might not be what you think is good, and all of those things. So when I say good, I mean something that other people think is worthwhile to watch, to spend my time on, to spend money on. Um, and if you hit, if you are able to create that, then the traditional gatekeepers, the record label, um, that has shifted, so you now have the tools in place to go viral and to get eyeballs to what you've created. And then once you've got momentum, as you said, then the hard work is then keeping that momentum and driving it forward. So I think, and, and not to mention also recording technology that I can now make an album in my, in my bedroom rather than in a studio that costs thousands of dollars a day to rent. Right. I, I'm really curious about whether uh, this sort of issue of rising above the noise because you have this this paradigm shift from the gatekeeper and stuff you know relatively small amounts of music put out I mean when I was younger I had I could probably name 12 bands I listened to and my son they just keeps coming up with a new song by a new band I can't keep track of them all you know and um, so we've gone to this paradigm where there is so much stuff out there are we in a situation where there's so much out that we're seeing some innovative stuff just because they've by random chance ri risen above the noise or are we is there really an opportunity and eventually the really good ones will rise up I, I think the, the the great ones always rise up yeah. I really do and I think that technology is allowing somebody to get smarter sooner and start breaking the code so you said that you didn't know your box could do what it did and you built it that's exciting to me I want the kid who's like, screw that, this should be plugged into that and plugged into this and then I'm gonna wire that and that's me, mm -hmm. right? That's what I get excited about. Um, you know, I, 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 we all, you know, when Skrillex first started out, it was like, where is this coming from? Mm -hmm. He knew exactly where it was coming from. It came from a guy in a punk rock band who said, screw it, I'm not making it this way, I gotta mm -hmm. pivot. Mm -hmm. and, and here comes this new thing that is now on Top 40 Radio. Right. Um, so it's, it's really exciting. And, and to stay on your point about technology from an industry perspective, mm -hmm. what I'm finding as the breakthrough are the tools that I have at my disposal now, like a, um, a Pandora, like a Soundhound, like a Shazam, that can identify whether or not something I'm working on has traction at a much earlier stage. Mm -hmm. So I don't have to wait for typical research or sales or ticket counts to know whether or not a song that I think is a hit is a hit. Right. And that's helpful because when I, when I do, do have one, I can shift resources, i.e. money, mm -hmm. uh, to it quicker. When I don't have one, I can take chips off the table. You know, this is one I'd love for, for, to get everyone's input on the group because it's, it's kind of the broadest question. Are we on the, the right path for the health and creativity, but also the wealth of those who are creative. I think the only difficulty is there's going to be a lot less money made for the big artist. Mm -hmm. I think that the long tail people can stay in the game. I think if you're 35 years old and you still think you want to be a rock star, you can continue to try. Mm -hmm. um, but I think the jets and the caviar and the limos um, start to shrink. Right. Um, so is that a bad thing? I don't know. Ask. It's, it's a 
kind of a bummer if you have a jet and a limo. Right. But um, for the rest of us who just want to be in the game, mm -hmm. uh, I think it's a good thing. I think mm -hmm. there's going to be more distribution across the board, but a lot less home runs. Right. And the, you know, again, you know, when you're talking about create the, the creation, where are we going, and, and with the wealth generation part, and uh, artists being paid, and that's that's always the question that 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 comes up on panels, and and you know, that, again, that was in the forefront of our minds with Whole World Band, and, and that you know, artists at any level, um, right from you know the Ronnie Woods who we have on the platform to uh, a 14-year-old kid who's just learning guitar can go on Whole World Band and play with other people and play with, another, with, with each other. Um, have their music protected, because we pay through um, to the PROs, and um, share with each other, if they wish, uh, the revenue generated as well. As someone who writes to on the web and in print millions of musicians and, and, and noticing that kids are really smart these days, I'll tell you what my fear is. I, I, see a, I do see a problem with the revenue structure, you know? I see a problem where uh, if a kid who, who now has to be a marketer, a promoter, an awesome songwriter, an amazing instrumentalist, and a recording artist all at one is going to look at the revenue streams and go, I might make $25,000 a year if I'm lucky. And I'm watching, I'm watching my budgets too, because like you said, I can't spend 30 or 40 or $100,000 on a record anymore. I'm, I'm a jerk if I do that. I, I, gotta, I gotta maximize my profit. Where are we gonna put it? Are, are you gonna make 35K? Are you gonna make 15K? Are you gonna make 50K? Kids won't do it. And to me, that freaks me out about the you know, growing creativity. You know, and of course, everything's cyclical. I get it. I'm not saying this is going to go on forever. But I think for a short term, if we don't fix the revenue thing in a way that's meaningful, where somebody can actually make a middle class wage being a, being a good, possessed, passionate musician, because that's what it takes to be middle class, even in the music industry, is to be that on it, passionate all the time. And if you tell that person they're going to make 25 k I really worry they're not going to do it. You know, I, hey man, I'll make music for fun. I'll play in bars so I, I can get chicks and dudes that way, and I, and I'll work at Seven <clears throat> Eleven. You know, because I can make forty thousand dollars working at Seven Eleven, and I can have a car and stuff. So that's where I think, and it's got nothing to do with all the fine stuff that's going on here because this is all awesome. But, and I don't know how we fix that revenue stream, mm -hmm. thing, but man, that sucks. Mm -hmm. so bad. <laughs>